Will you please welcome to the stage, Paul and Storm. Wow, thanks to our opening act, Jonathan Colton. He's showing real promise. We've had some great things for that one, boy. All right, future for that one. Oh, I don't know how. I know that's going to be the theme of this week, but I'm, uh, yes, I'm very, very glad the lights are down now. I, I'm just happy this guitar is already tuned. I swear. <laughs> We're sorry, what have we done? Was that because we're going to solve this right here and right now. The next 20 minutes are going to be us tearing apart that tuner. We good? We good? Boja's good for tunies. Are we good? Yeah, uh, play a little more because I just picked your ball in this one. Okay, that's good. All right, yeah. We're just humming right along with a perfectly smooth professional set. Hi there, gold team. I, uh, I, Okay. <laughs> I looked up, actually, because I couldn't remember, I looked up while Jonathan was performing that last song. This song we put out in 2012. With the exception of one or two lines here or there, it remains painfully relevant. <laughs> Some songs are timeless because of how well they're written. Others are timeless because things simply haven't changed. Uh, so, uh, yeah. <laughs> this goes out from our nerd hearts to yours. George R. R. Martin, please write and write faster. You're not going to get any younger, you know. Winter is coming, I'm growing impatient, and you still got to hold left to go, so right, George, right like the wind. I curse the day that my friend ever loaned me an old dog-eared paperback called Game of Thrones. How could I know that this seed would grow into an addiction that held me right down to my bones? Now by those later I work with the masses, indignant, entitled, and waiting for Why does every new verse of your song keep taking you so goddamn long? George R. R. Martin, please write and write faster. Please give us boiled leather and sigils and seal. We need our allotment of incessant intrigue and six-page descriptions of every last meal. So write, George, write like the wind. Took five years to chronicle Narnia. Tolkien had twelve years and Rowling took twenty. You could spend a few weeks to get I'm sorry, twenty? My sense of time is so warped right now that my numbers go one, two, twin, Gundy, okay? Why, well, I ain't seen him since he was nine, twenty years old. And now he's Gundy. I curse the day that my friend ever loaned me. And oh, that's the that's first the person, one. Yeah, that was totally. I'm remembering my twins right now. That's the problem. Did you just put a time trigger on this song? What the hell? Somebody did. Bosh! <laughs> you <Louis> spent. <laughs> okay, now wait. Watch. Next one, he's not going to be able to get the first syllable out. And then the guitar. Why? <laughs> Now, Nuggets. <laughs> Alright, Lewis. <laughs> Lewis took five years to chronicle Narnia. Tolkien had ten. <laughs> <laughs> I've never got to be able to use that number again! Alright. Those of you who know the words, we're all gonna sing this, we're all gonna sing twin, and we're gonna keep on going to finish this fucking song. <laughs> Lewis spent five years to chronicle Narnia. Tolkien had twelve years and Rowling took ten. <laughs> <laughs> Star Wars, and we all know how that one turned out. <laughs> you're not our bitch, and you're not a machine, and we don't mean to dictate how you 
spend your days, but please bear in mind in the time that you've had, William Shakespeare turned out 35 freaking plays. And if we keep writing so slow, you'll hold up the HBO show. And George, while you're at it, stop killing our favorite characters, please. Wendy, and right, George, right. Like the wind. George R. R. Martin, please write and write faster. Like the more you are, dead, George.